Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Polish Dragon PI Show. I am your host, Steve Zimkowski, and I'm here to share with you old radio shows from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s pertaining primarily to the private detective genre. Occasionally, we will throw in a drama or a mystery like we're going to do today. As I said, I am Steve Zimkowski, and I am the author of the Polish Dragon PI book series. Those award-winning books are available at www. Dot polishdragon.com. They are also available on Kindle for just 99 cents. That's right, 99 cents on Kindle. You can have these award-winning books for just 99 cents. If you don't have a Kindle reader, you can download the app to your laptop, to your tablet, or to your phone. And as I said, we're going to do this week, we are going to go with a mystery, and it's called A Man Called X, an espionage show, and it's a race against death. So sit back, relax, Get your snacks together while I take you on a journey back in time to when radio was the only form of home entertainment. Here we go with a man called X in Race Against Death. On a recent program, we talked about the uh, shadows, blue coal ring as being so valuable. And that brings to mind the Captain Midnight Codographs. We'll talk about those a little bit later on the program. Right now, we continue with this Man Called X episode that takes place in San Juan, Puerto Rico. First broadcast, April 21st, 1951. Herbert Marshall as the Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. A thousand miles to the south of Florida it lies, south of the Bimini Islands, Nassau, and ancient Hispaniola, a land of surf and palm lined shore, a paradox of modern buildings and tropical splendor. It is the island of Puerto Rico, a land of peace and native songs and exotic flowers, and of violence. I'm with you. Talk, you pig. I said, talk, Rubira. Talk. <laughs> No, no, I would tell you nothing, nothing. You will tell us who else knows of your suspicions or we will... Carlos, it is enough. But, Senor Jimenez... If he will not talk, he will not talk. Not to you, Jimenez. Not to a traitor to Puerto Rico, to the United States. You are quite right, amigo. You will not talk to Pedro Jimenez. Not to anyone else. <laughs> So, I believe that finishes our business here. Come along, Carlos. Si, sí, Senor Jimenez. <laughs> Operator X. The man called X. Get me. Get the man called. We'll return to the adventure with Ken Thurston, the man called X, in just a moment. Central Texas, budding and blooming. And to make sure your lawn and garden will, visit Xanadu 2 Nursery. X marks the spot at Xanadu where there's a full line of plants and trees to beautify your Texas yard, Texas style. Plus many flowering ornamental and shade trees such as crepe myrtles, red buds, and Chinese tallows. Xanadu 2 can do it all, including the complete design and installation of entire residential and commercial landscape plans. Complete sodding and hydro mulching supplies and services. Plus they also design and install irrigation systems. For that finishing touch, Xanadu can also add a rock retaining wall and walkway to your yard. And at Xanadu 2, delivery and planting services are always available. Remember the original Xanadu Nursery on Highway 150 near Onion Creek in Driftwood, Texas, which carries fountains and statuary, and the new Xanadu 2 at 1900 Barton Springs Road at Wright Studio, where they're celebrating their grand opening by giving away a free one-gallon Fotinia shrub with every purchase. Xanadu 2 Nursery. Once again, our star, Herbert Marshall. So his dying words would ask for you, Ken. That's what the report says, Chief. I don't get it. What's the connection between the murder of a Puerto Rican newspaper man and the Bureau? 
Luis Rubiera was more than a newspaper man. He was a crusader, always fighting for the benefit of the little people and for his country. This time, I think he bit off more than he could chew. Like what? Like the Nationalista Party. Oh, wait a minute, Ken. The Nationalista Party's no threat anymore. After a couple of their gunmen made that uh, assassination attempt in Washington, they were broken up. Mm Mm-hmm. Or did they go underground? Hmm. Chief, that part is an organized gang of revolutionaries. You know, Puerto Rico for the Puerto Ricans. We've heard that line before. China, Korea. And if they're still operating there, underground, well, it's like an H-bomb sitting in the heart of Latin America. Only a thousand miles from the Panama Canal. Yes, but, Ken, we don't know that they've gone underground. We haven't any proof. What if Luis Rivera had? Hmm. Miss Brooks. Book passage for Ken Thurston on the first plane for San Juan, Puerto Rico. You won't ever regret taking me along here to Puerto Rico. I know every hatch of dive in San Juan. That figures. Sure, whatever it is you want here, I'm the guy who can fix it up. What have we had for now, Mr. X? Wine? Songs? Women? Hey, God, I want you to get me some information about the Nationalista Party. That's a cinch. When it comes to arranging parties, I'm the... The Nationalista Party. That's right. Oh, goodbye, Mr. X. I just remembered I forgot an important date back in Florida. Oh, relax, you idiot. But, but, Mr. X, these nationalist jokers, uh, they would just as soon cut your throat for a nickel. And sooner you... Then you know him. Oh, I won't admit that. Nothing. Positively nothing. Not for a million bucks would I have anything to do with the... With the... Hey. Hey, that's a scene, though. Yeah. Well, oh, Mr. Thurston, my oldest and, and dearest friend. <laughs> if there's any little thing I can... Uh... Hey! Here you are, Pedro. But you tore it in two pieces. And you're only giving me half. You'll get the other half when you get me some dope about the Nationalista. And why Luis Rubiera was killed. Oh, but Mr. Thurston... You'll find me at the offices of La Libertad, Rubiera's newspaper. But Mr. Rex... So long, Pedro. But wait... would come here, Kim. Luis always said you could never refuse a call for help from a friend. Your husband was more than a friend, Maria. See, I know. During the war, the two of you were... But that is past history now. Maybe not. No, of course not. You are here to help him with the same fight again. That's right, Maria. What can you tell me about it? Well, perhaps Steve Bennett can help me explain. Bennett? See... He was working with Louis when he was... One moment, Ken. Steve, would you come in here a moment, please? Of course, Maria. Steve is the managing editor of our English edition. He was Louis' right-hand man in the investigation. What can I do for you, Maria? Steve, this is Ken Thurston. Ken, Steve Bennett. Glad to know you, Thurston. How are you, Bennett? Ken is an old friend of Louis. He is here to help us in whatever way he can. Well, we can use help, Thurston. All we can get. We're up against some very tough competition. The, uh, Nationalista. That's right. Luis was one of the few men who realized what a real danger they are. So he went after them? Yes. With Steve's help. They were attempting to learn where the new underground headquarters were. And more important... Who was the real leader? You have any luck, Bennett? Oh, we helped the Secret Service round up some of the more obvious followers, the front men. But Luis was convinced that somebody big, somebody very powerful, was really behind the movement. Do you suspect anyone? Well, if he did, he was killed before he could tell us. Uh. Steve, Luis did suspect someone. Pedro Jimenez. Jimenez? No. Who's he? One of our most respected citizens. A philanthropist, a wealthy plantation owner, member of the Puerto Rican government. Mm, somebody big, somebody very powerful. Well, he fits the bill without question. And if Luis was right, but how can we prove it? If Luis was right, Bennett, we're going to prove it. Bennett, we're in 
trouble. Trouble, amigo? A man called Thurston just came to San Juan. He's investigating the party. Uh, others have attempted to investigate the party also. Yes, but this man's different. And he's after Jimenez. Senor Jimenez? Uh, then he suspect? Yes. I don't have to tell you what to do. That is quite correct, Senor Bennett. You do not have to tell Carlos what to do. The river of gold, you understand? No. Sure. Some come from join, eh, Mr. X? Luis Rubio used to come here? That's right. And the dope I got is that he was here about that uh, nationalista bar. So how about giving you the rest of that sea note, eh, Mr. X? I got a big deal cooking, and, and I could use it. This deal of yours, does it have black hair, blue eyes, and wear a silver fox? How did you know? Coming over to the table now. Oh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So you come right with last thing, I'm darling. Hello, baby. I've been waiting for you, muchacho. But they did not know you're going to bring a friend. Oh, don't let it bother you, baby. I got a little banking type business to talk over a minute, and and then you and me will go out for the town. <laughs> oh, it sounds most intriguing, Vegas. Uh, are you not forgetting something? Uh, huh? Forgetting what? My name's Ken Thurston, Senorita. Oh. And mine is Nina Rodriguez, uh. Ken. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Nina Rodriguez. Uh, how about that half a scene note, Mr. Thurston? Hey? Tegan's told me so much about you, Ken. About the way in which the two of you work together so well. Oh. Uh, uh, look, baby. <laughs> uh, on a second thought, business can wait. Uh, let's brush out of this place right now, eh? You must find it most thrilling, Ken, to work with a man such as Tegan. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Now, now like I would say... complimentary I... to you that he has made you his first assistant. Yes, isn't that nice? Well, <laughs> you know how... how to, don't you, Mr. I... <clears throat> would you like to dance, Nina? I'd love to. If Tegan does not mind... Well, I... Well, he I... won't mind. Will you... Boss. Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Go right ahead. Go on, Nina. Don't mind me. I'll just wait here at the table. <laughs> So, Ken, what is it you wish to ask me? What makes you think I wanted to ask you something? I don't flatter myself that even my charms would make you wish to suffer to this impossible music. What is it? Silver fox and expensive jewelry hardly belong in a dive like this. And your heart is the type to go for Pagan. But he has such a darling accent. Mm -hmm. He's also got a habit of giving out information. See, I discover that fact. So? I too have that habit, but with a difference. Pagan is susceptible to flattery and charm. I'm only susceptible to money. Huh. Shall we say $10,000? Really? What information could be worth that kind of money? Oh, who knows? Perhaps if one were interested in the death of Luis Rubira, or in the Nationalista Party, or in Senor Pedro Jimenez. Huh. You may not have too much time in which to decide. Why not? You'll learn when you return to your table. To my... Oh. <laughs> so you notice, Pegon is no longer there. Who is the man sitting there now? The one who will inform you why you do not have much time. Thank you for the dance, Ken. We'll meet again soon. And when we do, I would prefer to have the money in cash. Hasta la vista, muchacho. Hmm. Hello, waiting for me? You are Senor Thurston, no? That's right. See, si, I've been waiting for you. My name is Carlos. Carlos Mendoza. Is that supposed to mean something to me? I am a captain of the police. Oh? Huh? See, si, I'm here to place you under arrest for the murder of Luis Rubira. <laughs> As you listen to the man called X, pay particular attention. The fellow who had to select the musical bridges, because so many of the scene changes were accomplished with musical bridges, and there's a great deal of punctuation of following the sound effects using uh, musical themes, uh, he had to really work overtime. Hard-working fellow, but most effective. We'll return to Ken Thurston, the man called X, and all his musical bridges in just a moment. 
power, the tension, the excitement and challenge of the legends of golf. Get your tickets now and be a part of all the thrilling action at the 10th anniversary Liberty Mutual Legends of Golf, April 20th through the 26th at the Onion Creek Club course. Some of the biggest names in golf will be there, and famous celebrities will be teeing up in the tournament as well. Daily tickets are available starting at practice day Monday, April 20th. Tuesday, see the big shootout in clinic with Chi-Chi Rodriguez. Wednesday, Celebrity Pro-Am. See the players and the stars. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's tournament play as the legends compete for cash and prizes. Get your tickets now at Rooster Andrews, Sears, Supreme Golf on Anderson Lane, Barton Creek Country Club, or the Legends Office, 2510 Onion Creek Parkway. For more information, call 282-4430 and get ready to become part of the Legends of Golf. Once again, Herbert Marshall. At a dockside cafe in Puerto Rico, Ken meets Nina Rodriguez, who offers to sell him information about the Nationalista Party and about Pedro Jimenez, a wealthy plantation owner suspected of being the party's leader. But the conversation is interrupted by the arrival of Carlos Mendoza, captain of police, who puts Ken under arrest for the murder of Luis Rubira. Now, 20 minutes later, a black sedan twists up the curving mountain road leading to the inland plantation country of Puerto Rico. Carlos Mendoza is in the rear seat. In front, beside the policeman driver, is Ken Thurston, the man called X, with Mendoza's gun pointing at the back of his head. It's a pretty long ride to police headquarters, isn't it, Mendoza? Do not be concerned, Senor Thurston. We shall arrive in good time. At headquarters of Pedro Jimenez Plantation. Uh, what difference, senor? The ultimate destination of all murderers is the grave. And of course, you've got all the evidence against me that you need. But we do not have, we shall obtain. I see. You get rid of me, you close the file on Rubira's murder, and the men of the Nationalista Party go on their merry way. Senor Thurston, it is you who continually bring the name of Senor Pedro Jimenez into the conversation, not I. I am merely performing my duty in bringing a murderer to justice. Of course, and I wouldn't want your conscience tortured by the thought that you might have helped to convict an innocent man, so I'd better take that wheel. Stop, you fool! You have given us all! You will it! But we got to do something, Mrs. Rivera. You're certain that Captain Mendoza... Yes, Mendoza Gizzard practically kidnapped Mr. Thurston. I saw them driving him away with guns. We are doing all that we can, Senor Zelsman. But until we are able to tell where they have taken him... All right. Thank you very much. Have you had any success, Steve? Nothing, Maria. Neither Captain Mendoza nor Ken Thurston has made an appearance at headquarters. <laughs> Poor Mr. Thurston. Maybe they're coming here or something. And he didn't even give me the other half of that C note before he took them away. Cheer up, Pagan. You'll get it. Yes. It's you. Thurston, what happened to you? Your clothes, the blood on your face. Well, there was a little accident from Mendoza's car and Puerto Rico's back country is pretty rugged. Back country? What's it all about, Thurston? What was Mendoza trying to do? Well, the rough guess would be that somebody tipped off Jimenez to the fact that we suspect him. So he sent his hired boy, Mendoza, to take care of me. Ken, Luis was right. Jimenez is the leader. We're on the right track, Maria. But proof, Thurston. Where are we going to get proof? And if they're desperate enough to pull a trick like the, way, the one they pulled tonight... Yeah, time's running out, but I think I know someone who can give us that proof. Who can? A girl by the name of Nina Rodriguez. <gasps> that little cookie... What she's got to do with this? I have a hunch. It's plenty. Of course, Ken. She used to be Jimenez's girlfriend. Louis mentioned her to me. If she could be persuaded to testify against him... I'm afraid that's an impossibility. Why, Bennett? This piece of coffee came into the desk a little while ago. There was a murder in the parking lot of El Rio Doro tonight. The victim, Nina Rodriguez. Okay, Mr. X. I got the window open. Now what? We climb inside. Oh, but this is that big shot Jimenez's house. What if he finds us? We just saw him leave the plantation and head for San Juan. He won't be back for at least a couple of hours. Now climb in. All right, Pagan. That does it. Let's get out of here. But what if 
they see the wires. In some places, we couldn't hide them so good. That's the chance you'll have to take. Come on. You are certain everything went all right, Ken? The microphones are well hidden, Maria. Look, this is what we've done. We've connected them to the wires running up the hillside to this cave. Mm-hmm. We'll get down every word on this portable recorder. something has gone wrong. It is already half an hour since we saw the lights of their cars pull up to the hacienda. And we have heard nothing yet. That only means they haven't gone into the library yet. But what if nobody in the joint feels like like reading tonight? After all, maybe there's some good radio programs or, or, or something. And anyways, didn't you say the chief was going to... I think I had a door. Come in, gentlemen. Yes. May as well be comfortable in here while discussing our futures and the future of the party. Ken, they are coming into the library now. Start the recorder, Pig. Aren't you bet. Oh, our plans have been well laid. If you carry out your assigned tasks as directed, within a week the Nacionalista Party should be in control of Puerto Rico. Do not worry, Senor Jimenez. We shall carry them out. Who? Mendoza. You didn't carry them out so well with Thurston last night, Carlos. That's bad. Yeah. Who else could have told him in as I was after him? Shall not happen again. Before tomorrow night, Senor Thurston shall be quite dead. And do not forget the others, Carlos. The lovely Senora Rubira. And that stupid fool, Zelschman. <laughs> I am rather weary of having to act the executioner for you, as I did with Luis Rubira. <laughs> Easy, Maria. However, our concern now is with the overall plan. So, at the meeting of the Senate tomorrow, we assassinate the governor. There will be coincidental rioting throughout the city. Carlos' men will protect the members of our party. You, Bennett, will be in charge of our propaganda machinery. I expect that propaganda to result in my being elected as the new governor. Oh, Ken. That's a well-established pattern, Maria. Are there any questions? Just one, he minutes. Why did you find it necessary to have a recorded transcript of our conversation here tonight? Oh. What are you talking about, Ben? That wire running along the molding leading to the microphone at the base of this lamp. <laughs> microphone? I put no microphone into it. Carlos. Get the record. Get police car out onto the road to San Juan. Do not let anyone reach the city from here if you have to shoot to kill. Out to the car, fast. We've got about one chance in ten of getting to San Juan before they catch us. Maria. They are gaining on us. Slowly, but gaining. Oh, we'll never make it. We'll never make it. The main road to San Juan is just over this hill. If we can make that, we'll be safe. Then all we have to Ken, do is... look ahead there. It's a rest. Hold those lanterns and stop. Uh, they've set up a roadblock. Wooden barricades. they phoned ahead. Then we have lost. They will stop us. Seize and destroy the record. And tomorrow... Ken, why are you stopping? Get out, Maria. You two, pay on. Fast. Go on, you idiot. Get out. Come to me. Here. Take the recording. Try to get it through to San Juan. I'll create a little diversion for you. What are you going to do, Ken? Just what Jimenez hopes I'll do. Try to crash that roadblock. Senor Testa, uh, you regain consciousness at last. Yeah. Yeah. You must be Pedro Jimenez. At your service, Senor. Yeah. Hmm. Back in your library, I see. I had you brought here after your little accident. I thought you might rest more comfortably in familiar surroundings. That's mighty nice of you. I trust the ropes are not too tight? Oh, no, no, no. Very satisfactory. Good. I've always prided myself on being a considerate host. Well, thanks. It is too bad that uh, you and I found ourselves pitted against one another on opposite sides of the world, as it were. Working together, we might have accomplished much. Working against each other, we have merely succeeded in achieving a stalemate. Is that what it is? Regretfully, I must confess it. 
Oh, Bennett and Carlos are still searching for your friends and the recording, but I do not delude myself into believing they will find them in time. That sounds more like a checkmate, Jimenez. Oh, no, no, not at all, my friend. While you have defeated me, I just as surely have defeated you. For I am going to kill you, you see. Beautiful weapon. Don't you agree? Is that the gun you used on Luis Rubiera? It is. You surprise me somewhat, Senor Thurston. Do you find no cause for alarm in this situation? Should I? Sometimes you Americans puzzle me. Why are you never intimidated by a display of strength? Never frightened by threats of armed aggression? We've been threatened before. Perhaps. But there is nothing more powerful on earth than strength of arms as the entire Western world will someday learn to its sorrow. And as you are going to learn right now. Adios, Senor X. Ken. Ken, are you all right? Yes, Chief, thanks. Diego and Maria got through then. Yeah, they did. Met me at the newspaper office as we had planned and... Well, it looks like you were right when you told Jimenez there was no cause for alarm. I'm not so sure, Chief. What? Jimenez said it was too bad that we were working against each other rather than together. Too bad, he said, that we were on opposite sides of the world. And he was right. But as long as one of us believes only in guns, armed aggression... Well, I guess we've got plenty of cause for alarm. That's Herbert Marshall as the man called X from April 21st, 1951. Just a moment, we'll be back to talk about those Captain Midnight photographs. better feeling than to know you're in control of your life by controlling your high blood pressure. So take your pills, watch your weight, and cut down on salt. Stay on your treatment every day. The National High Blood Pressure Education Program. Now that the 1986 taxes are behind us, it's time to start planning a way to reduce your taxes for 1987. Tax-deferred annuities and investment life insurance are being touted by financial gurus everywhere as the place to put your money. But are they all that good? This Sunday night on Money Talk, insurance professional Bruce Gardner will help me answer your questions in this area. Join me, Randy Morsey, at 6 p.m. this Sunday night on Austin's only call-in financial talk show. Money Talk, heard exclusively here on KLBJ AM 590. When you need to know. News Talk 590, KLBJ AM, Austin. CBS News, I'm Bill Whitney. At last word, the president of Argentina was still at a military base outside Buenos Aires, Raul Alfonsin trying to convince a rebellious group of army officers to lay down their arms. Newsman Frederick Tice says this personal appeal is risky business. The president's walking into a tough situation. Uh, it's not the 70 rebels that really matter. Uh, it's, it's the fact that officers in the, in the force that were brought in to put the rebel rebellion down who refused to fire on the rebels. So now he's got to find some way out of this. And uh, he's a bold president, and this is probably the boldest move in his three years uh, in office. He hopes the rebels will lay down their arms. He's going to have a tough time convincing them, and he's, he's walking into a real hot spot there. Anything could happen to him. But earlier, Alfonsin said it would be worse to do nothing. He told thousands of supporters gathered outside the presidential mansion that the military uprising was risking bloodshed between brothers. An earlier rebellion by army officers in the southern city of Cordoba ended peacefully. 
A statement from the White House today says the United States is deeply disturbed by any development which threatens civilian constitutional rule in Argentina. More news in a minute. Okay, everybody. New IBM computers are here. What? I said the new IBM computers are here. The new computers are here? IBM Personal System 2 is the biggest news in computers in five years, and you act like someone just delivered a pizza. Well, they're destined to be the, the premier personal computers of our time. Right. This calls for, for Churchillian oratory to describe the incredible power of these new systems. Here, here. Yes, get excited. What graphics, what clarity. 256 colors on the screen at any one time. Mm. Be as bold as the colors. Well, the way I understand it, these are the next generation in personal computing. Right. Ah. The beginning of a new era. Mm. Yeah. All that sort of thing. And mm. lots more power in a lot less space. Imagine all of us connected to any of our offices, anywhere in the world. Wow. And yeah. that's all you have to say. Mm. Well, gee, everybody, what else did I have to say? But they're from IBM. The new IBM Personal System 2. The next generation in personal computing. U.S. and Soviet officials are expressing optimism about the prospects for some kind of arms control agreement this year. But Wisconsin Democrat Les Aspen, chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, is uneasy about the latest Soviet proposals for eliminating short- and medium-range nuclear missiles from Europe. The whole thing worries me a very, very great deal. Um, I think that, uh, that this business of gradually eliminating sections of nuclear weapons is not a very smart idea, given the fact that as long as there's the conventional imbalance in Europe, we're going to need nuclear weapons. Without doing something about the conventional imbalance, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, we're going to eliminate the medium range, then we're going to eliminate the short range. It's a process there that I think is a little bit dangerous. Aspen was interviewed on the ABC News broadcast this week. U.S. nuclear missile bases in West Germany were the targets of demonstrations today. Thousands of people joined rallies calling for nuclear disarmament. It'll be remembered as the Easter flood of 1987. One and a half square miles of Richmond, Virginia went underwater as the James River, swollen by three days of rain, rose 16 feet above flood stage. Now, William Caston of the city's public safety department says the recovery effort is underway. Teams are already in with the starting on the cleanup, even though it's only gone down a matter of a few inches. They are working right with the water as it recedes and heads back to the banks. We will have uh, facilities and equipment to clean the streets and sidewalks and public areas and to assist the merchants. As yet, there's no estimate on the property damage, but as floods go in Richmond, officials say they've had worse. A new system of pumps kept a lot of water out of the commercial district. It was a white Easter in parts of the West where a spring snowstorm developed over the Great Basin and refused to move. The mountains of northern Utah got seven inches of snow. Montana got up to nine inches. And that ends another episode of the Post Dragon P.I. show. You have been listening to The Man Called X in a Race Against Death. Remember, if you like the Polish Dragon P.I. books, you can get them at www.polishdragon.com or you can get them on Kindle for just 99 cents. Go to Amazon Kindle where you can find those award-winning books for just 99 cents. Remember to give us a like down below and remember to give us a follow at the same time, okay? Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.